Oh, sure, we all give Cruella de Vil a hard time because she wants to kill a bunch of puppies to make fur coats. A and yeah, she is actually the worst for doing that. But let's also not forget who actually gave Cruella the idea in the first place. What a charming dog. Thank you. Spot. Yes, yeah, she's Dalmatian. Inspiration. Yes. You saw that right. Anita, our protagonist, outright gives Cruella the idea. But wait, there's more. Long hair or short? Short. Coarse or fine? I'm afraid it is a little coarse. Pity. But it was very fine when she was a puppy. Redemption. Stop giving her information. Cruella was ready to give up on the idea until you talked her into it. And it doesn't even stop there. I did leopard spots in the 80s. Well, Dalmatian spots are a little different, aren't they? Cozy. Cuddly. Classic. Less trashy. Exactly. And after she outright says, Well, if we make this coat, it would be as if I were wearing your dog. <laughs> They still tell her that their dogs are having puppies and that the babies will... Uh, the spots don't come till later. You're sure? Yes. All right. Anita, girl, honey, real talk? Are you trying to get your dogs killed or what? Jeez. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, a show that one day hopes a theory-loving maniac will steal 15 of our theories, and those 15 theories will escape and return to us with 84 more theories for a total of 99. Then we'll write a theory episode about how the person who stole the theories in the first place wasn't a villain at all, make it a two-parter, and bring us to 101. It'll make us millions, we'll start a purebred theory farm, and Disney will make a movie about our life story. Maybe even a prequel story about the villain who stole him in the first place. Or maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. In 1956, Dodie Smith penned the book 101 Dalmatians, which introduced the world to the all-time great villain Cruella de Vil, a scheming heiress who loves fur. Fun fact, by the way, in that original story, she also loves eating hot peppers, she's obsessed with fire, and she may just be the descendant of a serial killer who's also the spawn of the devil. And that, my friends, is why it pays to read the source Material. Anyway, the plot of the book revolves around Cruella's attempts to steal 15 Dalmatian puppies from her former schoolmate Anita in order to turn them into a spotted fur coat. And wouldn't you know it, a year later in 1957, Walt Disney himself says, Hey, you know that book about the demon spawn that wants to murder a bunch of animal babies? Let's turn that into a kid's movie. Those were, in fact, his exact words. One 79-minute movie later, and history was made. The Cruella character is legendary, becoming one of only three animated characters to appear on the American Film Institute's 100 Years, 100 Heroes and Villains list. And now, Cruella on Disney Plus, because why not humanize the egregiously wealthy heiress who is like, hey, I can buy whatever I want, but instead, I'm thinking I'm gonna murder a bunch of adorable puppies. Ugh, I'm just hoping they keep the part about her serial killer grandpa in there. Anyway, what I want to focus on today is the end of all versions of the story. You see, at the end of the original animated movie, because Cruella was buying and stealing so many dogs, the 15 original Dalmatians now total 101 leaving our hero couple of Roger and Anita to adopt them all and start a Dalmatian plantation to care for them. And while that's all cute and adorable, I mean, that is like a lot of dogs. Like, a lot, a lot of puppies. It's a wonderful gesture having hundreds of dogs running around a country estate in England, but from a logistical and cost perspective, it's gonna be expensive. For all you dog owners out there, you know that having one dog can be expensive. Now think about owning 101 Dalmatians who need hours of daily activity and special specialized diets to make sure that they don't develop bladder stones. So just how much is it going to cost you to take care of 101 Dalmatians? Spoiler alert, it may just be enough to make you consider giving Cruella a call. The first step and largest one-time expenditure would be buying a large estate in the English countryside. The example of what we're looking for comes from the end of the 1996 film, where the Dearlies live in a gigantic manor that's painted with black and white spots. I mean, look at this thing! Based on current prices of English estates in the country, Countryside, the mansion they bought would cost at least $4,900,000. And I'm talking that is a bare, bare minimum price. Let's throw in an extra 50,000 pounds or $70,000 for renovations like fences and miscellaneous costs that'll be needed to prepare the puppy paradise. And already you've spent right around $5 million. And before I get into how much it would actually cost to care for the dogs, I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Do Roger and Anita have enough money to pay for that? Short answer 
answer, yes. Shockingly, in the 1956 book, Roger's just a financial wizard that's loaded with cash. In both the 1961 and 1996 films, Roger and Anita make millions overnight after writing a song and making a video game where they steal and slander Cruella's name and likeness. Excellent villain, mate. Might want to put some of that money aside for legal fees, guys. If Cruella ever comes for you, she's got herself a pretty solid case. Now, for as expensive as the English manor might be, the good news is that it means that they don't have to pay for a full-time dog walker. Dalmatians are one of the most active dog breeds, and a hundred and one of them would most certainly require 24-7 help, especially if they were still living in central London. Professional dog walkers earn at minimum $35,000 a year, and with a hundred and one dogs to walk each and every day, you can rest assured that that person would be needing to go around the clock. It's recommended that no more than four dogs dogs are walked at once, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that they're doing 10 at a time. If each walk is one hour, that is still a 10 hour workday of non-stop walking to get through all of them. As such, we're just going to estimate that you need to hire two professional full-time dog walkers, racking up $70,000 in costs for daily dog walks alone. The other nice thing about having a giant estate for your massive pile of pups is that it gives us a solution for the poop. Based on a dog poop calculator, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is my job to look this sort of thing up. The 101 dogs would produce a whopping 32,000 pounds, or 14,500 kilograms of poop a year. That's enough to fill up 1,882 plastic shopping bags. Each and every day, your collection of sweet, lovable pups will be dropping dookies in excess of 87.6 pounds, 40 kilograms of dog turd. In a perfect world, you could find a way to sell the waste as fertilizer, or just use it in a garden. But wait, dog poop has harmful fecal bacteria and happens to be highly acidic, which means that it's not typically used for fertilizer. I researched composting possibilities instead, but that would take months. Best bet, make a sign that says free poop. Make a sign that says free anything and someone will take it. Or, you know, if all else fails, get yourself a mid-sized tractor and shove it all into a big hole. Oh sure, 101 Dalmatians, just like when you're a kid. It's all fun and games to think about having a dog, or in this case, a hundred of them but the excitement starts to fade when the cold, harsh reality of dog turd sets in. That is why this channel's motto is ruining your childhood. And that is also why you should click the subscribe button right now so you can take our theories and use them to ruin someone else's childhood. Oh, but we're not done today, not even close. On top of these expenses, the Dalmatians will also need outdoor automatic waterers, we calculated five at about $70 a pop, and indoor four gallon gravity waterers, 10 at $106 per, because Dalmatians have a unique urinary system that requires plenty of fresh water at all times, otherwise they're gonna get kidney stones. Oh, sure. You may think they could drink from a nearby stream, but most veterinarians agree that untreated water could run the risk of bacteria or contamination. Throw in 101 dog beds, 101 chew toys, 101 leashes, 101 grooming supplies because Dalmatians shed a lot, and 101 dog tags. And suddenly, you've just dropped another $12,600. So, let's just take that $5 million estate out of the total. They're just gonna be living in a normal, regular house, right? As such, you've hired on your two dog walkers, you've bought a giant pooper scooper, and you've cleaned out the shelves of Pet Supplies Plus for a bunch of miscellaneous dog things. In total, you've spent about $107,600, and all of that is without even tapping into the day-to-day -day expenses. Dalmatians require three cups, about 0.75 pounds or 0.34 kilograms of food a day. This equals 75.75 pounds or 35 kilograms of dry dog dog food in order to feed all of them every single day. Now, I know in this world they're mostly puppies and puppies eat smaller amounts, but they're gonna grow. So I'm sticking with a three cups of food a day rule just to make the estimate easier. It would be best to feed the Dalmatians food that's low in purines to prevent uric acid from building up in their bodies, thereby preventing the aforementioned urinary stones. So most of the cheaper as well as high in protein diets are out, which means that our cheapest option for 101 dogs is gonna cost $186 and 50 cents each day. Multiply that food cost by 365 days and it's $68,072.50 .50 per year just to feed them all. That's without even mentioning the greenies or wet food that the dogs could and should be eating occasionally. Since the dogs are going to be spending a lot of time outside, they're going to need flea and tick treatment to prevent the 101 dogs from carrying 1,001 fleas. Flea and tick treatment would cost at least $19,405.67 annually 
annually. Pet insurance? Since you never know when Corella's coming back. According to Forbes Advisor UK, the average annual pet insurance premium in 2019 was 271 pounds, or approximately $22 a month. This means the yearly insurance would cost at least $38,668.65. And now you really get a sense of how this works. The numbers really get big once you have 101 as your constant multiplier. What about vet visits? The average cost for a consultation and diagnosis is $85 with insurance. So you're spending at least $8,561 a year with visits that don't include medicine, surgery, or specialized treatments. Throw in annual boosters, $5,564 total a year, and you've suddenly added $140,271.82 in yearly expenses of food and medicine on top of the already insane $107,600 we calculated earlier. That is a grand total of $247,871.82 for the first year of ownership alone. And of that, $210,000 is recurring expenses that are going to happen each and every year afterward. And all of that is also assuming that there are no new additions. In 2018, a Dalmatian gave birth to 18 puppies. Now imagine the 101 Dalmatians over time. There's going to be a lot of little puppies born on the property, and each of them is also going to have to be looked after. Each and every one of those new little bundles of joy is going to need those exact same expenses added to the total. So maybe the better financial decision would have just been to make them into coats. Well, wouldn't you know, I ran the numbers on that. In a weird twist of fate, let's just say that Corella is actually successful in taking the 99 soft furred puppies and turning them into coats. How much could she have made off of those garments? Well, in the 1961 animated film, her henchmen say, You couldn't get off a dozen coats out of the old caboodle. Honestly, they're not wrong. On the post Warped Disney Math on ConquerMaths.com, they analyzed the age of the dogs, studied furrier websites on what fur could be used, and created some admirable math to turn a bleak subject into a learning experience that didn't make me want to cry. In the end, they figured out that Cruella would have only been able to get three fabric-lined fur coats as well as one muff out of those 99 puppies. Not a whole heck of a lot when compared to the absolute atrocity she's committing to get that fur. Because it is Dalmatian fur, the jacket would probably have to be reversible so the wearer could, you know, hide what their jacket is actually made of. Which is also what Cruella wanted to make in the book. Right now, Fendi is selling brown mink reversible fur coats for $27,000 a pop. So three coats and a muff? That's gonna earn you around $65,000. Certainly a whole heck of a lot more cost effective than dropping a cool quarter of a million each and every year to keep them alive until, of course, you factor in the fact that you sold your soul in the process of making those coats. But there is a third happier option in all of this. You find the puppies a good home, just, you know, a home that isn't yours. You sell them. Seriously, I know these dogs are human level smart and they all seem awfully attracted to each other. Birdie, we're keeping the puppies, every single one of them. But moments from the books and movies made me realize that the owners are totally down to sell some of these Dalmatians. In 102 Dalmatians, the 2000 sequel in which Cruella de Vil is hypnotized into being good, then unhypnotized when she hears the bells of Big Ben, we learned that Dipstick, one of the original 15 dogs from the 1996 movie, was adopted by Chloe Simon, who is also Cruella's probation officer. It's a small world. And in 101 Dalmatians 2 Patches London Adventure, also a sequel not to be confused with 102 Dalmatians, we see original pup Patch feeling lonely and left out as he's surrounded by so many other dogs. In the end, he becomes an actor on the show The Thunderbolt Adventure Hour. I bring all this up because it seems like the dogs do want to grow up and move out of the house. So it may be better for the dogs, and it is most certainly better for Roger and Anita's pocketbooks. The selling price of purebred Dalmatian puppies in the UK range from 1200 to 3000 pounds, or 1700 to $4,200. If each litter averages six to nine puppies, that means they could be making at least $10,000 per litter. Dalmatians can start giving birth at six months, so they could make a lot of money at the plantation by selling the purebred Dalmatians to worthy owners. If, let's say, 30 of the Dalmatians have two litters each and every year, that's 360 puppies. Selling them all results in somewhere around $612,000 per year in dog earnings. And that's on the low end. Because these are indeed famous dogs, as we see in the 101 Dalmatians 2 movie, they'd probably net the high end of the asking price, totaling nearly $1.5 million per year in earnings. And considering that Roger and Anita are good people that 
care about these animals, the puppies will be healthy and the business transactions will be honest. With these sorts of numbers, the puppy plantation could hire more staff, buy more land, even start taking in more animals, like the Deerleys actually do in the 1956 book, where believe it or not, they even adopt Cruella's abused cat. In the end, while the theft of their beloved puppies must have been heart-wrenching, every cloud has itself a silver lining. It opened up the Deerleys' hearts to a hundred puppies, and it opened their pocketbooks to make millions off of hit songs, popular video games, and of course their side hustle of selling Dalmatian purebreds. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And I'd like to give a very, very special thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Nord protects you and your data on the internet by keeping it safe behind a wall of next generation encryption. So when you're doing questionable things on the internet, like say, uh, doing research into the logistics of skinning Dalmatians for luxury coats, you can rest easy knowing that your data is secure. As you might be able to imagine, it's nice to know that that search history ain't gonna be following me around. With VPN servers located around the world, Nord allows you to enjoy the internet with no limits, no borders, giving you access to versions of websites that are unavailable to you at your current location. So let's just say for a moment that you live in a country where Disney has taken all of their classic movies and put them in a vault waiting for you to pay for Disney+. Plus. Oh wait, that's literally every viewer in the United States. Well, thanks to NordVPN, you don't need a Disney Plus subscription to watch those. In just two clicks, you're suddenly in a different part of the world where you're able to stream movies like Ant-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming using Netflix Canada. Or, let's say you have the inescapable urge to stream Jack Black's classic School of Rock every waking moment. You can just hop over to Netflix UK to get your fix. Or, if that's not enough Jack Black for you, and believe me, it may not be, you can hop over to Netflix Canada again and watch Kung Fu Panda right after. Plus, Nord gives you the ability to connect up to six devices on one account. So no matter whether you're using your computer, phone, or tablet, Nord has got your back. And with their strict no-log policy, I can feel secure knowing that they're not tracking, collecting, or sharing any of my private data. Right now, our friends at Nord are offering a huge discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash filmtheory. It's in the top line of the description. Plus, if you use the code filmtheory at checkout, you get an additional month for free. They offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so it really, truly is risk-free. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash film theory. Unlock the world's internet and feel safe browsing using Nord. And as always, I'll see you all next week.